Good morning, Inspire and Illuminators. It's me, Jennifer Engel, CEO and founder of Inspire Illuminate, which is me, just doing these drawings with Jen. Still trying to wrap up um, high possibility states to be launched in June or so. And yeah. So today, again, I wasn't going to do a jot with Jen, but topics just kind of hit me. And I share what I think about in my morning walks and meditations because I learn from others. And even if just one person learns something or sees the world in a new way, whether they want to believe that or not, that's fine. Sometimes just sharing ideas and seeing different perspectives can even just make life more interesting. So this morning, and for many years, and that is often what happens with my talks, I have been meditating, thinking about concepts. There are about three concepts that I have been thinking about and meditating upon. One of them is time, how it works, the other one is love, and the other one is the harvest, which is a biblical concept. And I felt like I had a breakthrough after learning about and thinking about those three concepts for a couple years. So let's go with the concept of time. Some people see time as linear, a straight line. Science has learned that time is not a straight line. It just appears that way. I have seen other people talk about time like a circle, like an old analytic clock. When you're walking in a circle, it seems as if you're walking in a straight line, but you're really starting at the beginning, moving around, getting to the halfway point, and then ending up back where you started, which if you believe in it or not, is kind of makes sense for reincarnation or whatever. But I've actually been seeing time as an unfolding. Like if you look at the magnetic field of the earth, and if you look at the magnetics of a human being, the energy is the same way. It goes up our spine, out our head, around our body, down to our feet, back up our spine, out our head, around our body, back up through our feet. So to me, that's how time works. It's more of an unfolding. And to me, I see it like rings on a tree or layers of onions. Every time it goes up our head and out our body, we have a new layer to us. Another way I like to look at it is um, all the ages we've ever been are still inside of us, like the rings in a tree. We've never lost them. We've just grown and matured, so the outside looks different. But we still have all those rings inside of us. And I see that for time as well. Well, what this has to do with the harvest and love that I've been really meditating on for years, <laughs> probably since 2011, more seriously. So there's this concept in the Bible and even in esoteric teachings um, that there's going to be a harvest. Now, when you read the concept in the Bible, it makes it sound like the people will be harvested. And I really always had a problem with this concept. It made it sound like the bad people, in quotes, 
will be burned like chaff and the good people, in quotes, will be saved. And I've always had just such uh, a dislike for that idea. Well, when I started meditating about time and love, every time that flow goes up our spine, out our head, and around our body, I realize what's being gathered, what's being harvested, is lessons. Lessons that we learn about love, or that we did not learn about love. And we have the choice to burn or erase the lessons we did not learn, the lessons that were painful from our consciousness, and we have also the ability to choose, hang on to, and make sure that they are never lost, the memories of love that we actually were successful at. Also, there are many layers to love. There is, I don't love, I don't feel love, I don't feel connected. Those are lessons of depression, isolation, loneliness, disconnection. And then there are lessons of lust. I love you because you satisfy me sexually. You please my physical body. Then there are lessons of ego. I love you because you build up my self-confidence or ego. Then there are lessons of real love. I love you because you touch my heart. There are lessons of I love you because when you speak to me, you remind me of who I am, that I am love, that I am good, that I am fill in the blank, that I am perfect or perfectly imperfect. And then there are lessons of love, maybe compassion, where you see beyond the physical. A lot of times with older people you hear, or with other, not, they don't have to be older, but I see your core. I see all of who you are, not just your physical being. And a lot of times we feel weaker or stronger connections to people when we connect with them on multiple levels. And so each relationship we have is a combination of those connections, okay? Or at the lowest level, there's no connection. So to me, when I was pondering time, if time isn't unfolding, our relationships probably go through these series of unfolding. You may have connected with someone on a lust or self, self, uh, selfish uh, connection. Sometimes people connect with people not because they feed their ego, but because they don't feel they deserve their ego or their personal self to be validated in the purest form that it is. And so sometimes people will form relationships with other people when they are in lower places because, I don't know, they're both insecure and they will feed that insecurity with each other. But as we raise in consciousness, at some point we leave 
the ego or the insecurity and we move into the heart and we realize that every single person deserves to be truly loved, not because of their physical body, not because they can do something for us. Although there are times I will talk about, I give my power, my focus, and my attention to those who can also grow the same things that I'm giving back. But that's energy. <laughs> that's a little bit different from love. And when we move into our heart center, what I've been seeing and hearing around me a lot lately is at least people my age, maybe younger, I don't know, are moving into their heart center and they're realizing they deserve this love. And so relationships that were built on lust, on insecurity, or in ego may be falling apart at this time. That is, it grew, it came out the top of our head, if you will, it bloomed into a tree or a flower, but like any cycle, it might be dying, it might be falling back into the ground to be recycled, if you can think of the petals or the leaves as the lessons, if you can think of the ground as being your subconscious that absorbs those lessons, then the roots of the tree feed on those lessons. They get brought up through our spine or the trunk of the tree in order to produce new relationships, a higher love, a better love, a bigger love. So this is what I've been contemplating for many years and I felt like I had a breakthrough. That time isn't linear. It's not even circular. It is unfolding. It is recycling. And the purpose of it is to learn lessons. Those lessons we learn, they have their time, they have their texture, and then they, there's two ways we could see it. We could see these crumblings <laughs> um, with fear, or what I've been learning is to look at situations that change more like playing with Legos or clay or cooking or anything else. You have fun reconstructing them. And then you say, this is cool, but now I'm ready for something different. Rather than fearing the difference with a glad heart, take it apart, give it thanks, and then build something new. So it, there's two ways to approach change. You can either do it with fear, or you could do it with a childlike heart and with a playful and joyful imagination and give thanks for the new creation that's about to come. So when they talk about the harvest, they're not talking about harvesting people. That's, that's, I don't know. <laughs> They're talking about the lessons is what's going to be harvested in this time recycling process. The lessons will come, they will bloom, they will go into our subconscious. And at that point, we have the choice of which lessons we're gonna burn, we're gonna wipe away from our memory. We can give them thanks, but we can say, those were hard lessons and I don't need to be taught in a hard way anymore. Thank you. What I'm gonna do instead of pulling up pain and whatever into my trunk 
into my memory is I'm going to hold on to all the good stuff. I'm going to let that feed myself and my new relationships and my concept of love. So this was my morning meditation this morning. I hope that I've opened up a new way of thinking about time and love and relationships and change. I hope it's helped someone today so that you can use your own concepts of love and lessons to first help yourself and then to help those around you. Because now more than ever, the world desperately needs those lessons of love and compassion, and it needs you. Peace and blessings.